When I need a break from watercolors, I usually choose inks. So this is me showing you how I would draw a iris flower using a Pentel brush pen. And I start by penciling out the flower with a, just a light 2B outline. And then I start using the, the brush pen to put an ink outline on here. And I'm doing it as lightly and as thinly as I can, but where I know some of those petals are going to have a shadowed area or kind of the bottom of them is going to be shadowed, I press down a little bit heavier with the brush pen so I get a thicker line. So I'm already getting a variety of line widths before I even start adding shading. And I start like I usually do, with a small part of the picture. So pop over here down to the bottom left hand corner. And what I start doing is one of the darker petals, because the petals on the base of this iris are very, very dark. And I'm using the brush pen and I'm starting it really, really lightly. And then just running that brush pen stroke upwards and pressing down a little bit more heavily each time I do it. So that it starts lightly and gets heavier towards the edge of that petal you can see there. So it's going to start light and then end heavy so it looks like it's going from light to dark. So suggesting shadow, suggesting depth. This part here is where the petal sort of folds over, so the bit underneath it is in quite a lot of shadow. So I know I can do a pretty much solid fill of black for a large section of this, and the brush pen's terrific for doing that. And then I'm going to put in some more hatched lines to suggest it's just a bit lighter on the edge of this petal, it's not solid black dark. But I have to transition this bit because I'm using the brush pen such vertical, I'm kind of covering over where I'm doing it. Here, I can explain it a little bit better. You can see I'm running out from the shadow towards the edge of the petal. So I'm starting thick against the shadow and then easing up on the pressure towards the outside edge. And that makes it seem like it's going from dark to light on the edge of the petal. So the top part of this petal has got a bit of a sort of streaky black and white line kind of pattern. So that's what I'm trying to do with the brush pen now. So I'm laying down some nice big thick strokes to begin with and the little gaps in between, the white lines you can see, they're supposed to be the pattern. And where the pattern fades out, then I just do a whole bunch of little thin um, hatched lines there, hatched strokes, so that um, it looks like it's going from a pattern to more of a, a tone. That's the idea anyway. I've mentioned hatching a couple of times so far, so I should just basically explain what that is. Because I'm using something that's difficult to get any tone other than black or white with it, what I have to do to suggest gray areas or other tonal areas is to use a technique called hatching, which is where you lay lines close together um, and from a distance that looks as though it's a kind of a gray tone. And obviously the closer together you lay these lines, the darker it's going to look. If you space them out more, then it looks paler. And the other thing that you can do is just press down heavier and make thicker lines or thinner lines. And that can also give you that idea of sort of something is lighter or something is darker or a patch of the tone is lighter or darker. So you can see me working from the edge of the petal sort of inwards with these strokes now. So I'm starting heavier and then I'm easing up on the pressure of the brush pen as I move sort of that stroke inwards towards the center of the leaf. And the other thing that I hope you can tell from this is the way that I'm angling all of these lines. They don't all go in the same direction. What I'm trying to do is suggest that the leaf is growing upwards and outwards from a center. So almost like a vanishing point, a lot of the lines that I put on the petals um, all over the entire picture, they kind of trace their way back to what would be the center of the flower, you know, usually by curling them and curving those lines as well, which is a little bit more difficult than doing straighter lines, but it was the effect that I wanted to get that kind of curved look of the flower. Now, the other thing that I'm doing as well, you can see I put down some pencil lines in here as a guide, and that's a guide to let me know when I start putting the hatch lines in, what direction, what kind of flow they're going in. So when I start to do this bit here, you can see the pencil lines have popped in. I start on the edge of the petal, but then I sort of twist and curve the line in as it comes inside and gets a bit thicker and darker towards the edge of the other petal. So what I'm trying to do with these lines is not only suggest depth in terms of like dark and light, but also because of the direction that the lines are going in, I'm hopefully suggesting that there's a bit of curve, growth and shape as well to the petal. Now with this iris, it's almost split into two different types of petal. The lower petals all appear to be really, really dark in tone, whereas the upper petals going upwards and outwards towards the sun, they seemed paler. So that's something else I'm trying to achieve with the way that I'm doing the petals. I'm hatching everything on the bottom petals, but when I come to these lighter petals, I'm just trying to hatch areas that have a bit of gray shadow to them, and I'm leaving lots of white highlights on the petals that are completely untouched. And that's to suggest that the, the petal itself is a lighter color than the ones towards the base of the iris. 
So as I finish up on this petal, doing the hatching, doing the lines of tone, I thought it'd be easier if I showed you this from a different angle because sometimes I hold the brush pen very vertically to do the lines and it can get in the way. So I set up a slightly different angle so you can see much more clearly here as I start to work from the outside of the petal inwards, you can see how I'm using the brush and how delicate the strokes I'm trying to do in order to um, get these kind of delicate tones on this petal and of course suggest that the petal itself is delicate. So I'm working heavier at the very edge of the petal and then I'm just easing up and I'm just dragging that brush pen tip off the paper gently and gradually. So what I should get is a nice tapered line. So it starts thick and gradually gets thinner as I pick it up and you know almost like reveals to nothing. It just starts thick and then goes nice and light towards the edge. And again you can see I'm angling those strokes inwards you know as I move around this petal they keep on pointing inwards towards what would be the center of the flower. So as I just finish off this petal towards doing the shadowed area I finish it off with a nice thicker line to show that there's a, a change between this and the surrounding petals. Now a couple of people on Instagram have, have kind of commented um, complimentarily about the style of this and what I'm using here and the first thing I'd say is it's kind of necessity when you're using a brush pen you know for me, in order to get that tone, unless I'm going to use some ink in a pot and you know, water it down and use a brush like Quink Ink or something, I've got to try and suggest tone using this kind of hatching technique. The other thing that I would say is it's probably informed by two other things. When I was at college, I did quite a lot of lino printing. And of course, lino printing and lino cuts, you know, you're carving out that lino and it gives you this very black and white line. And the only way that you can really get tone there without using acid and stuff like that is to, um, you know, suggest this kind of hatched approach. And the other way that I think I'm influenced is by an artist called Bernie Wrightson who did um, a comic book bunch of pictures for the novel Frankenstein, I think back in the 70s. Uh, beautiful, beautiful black and white illustrations and I'm very much influenced by his work. So here you can see me doing the kind of pollen-y, feathery little bit um, in the center of one of the, the, the lower petals on the iris. And this is a very, very dark petal, but this section is all kind of feathery. So I had to change the way that I was doing the strokes here, and deliberately because it would offer something different. And to show the texture of this kind of feathery, fuzzery bit, uh, I'm just doing these little, little dabby, little flicky little strokes that you can see. And starting out nice and thick and dark with lots of them clustered at the top. But then as it moves down the petal and it gets lighter and it's catching more light, I'm trying to do the lines lighter and thinner, but also more spaced out. So trying to achieve this kind of like dark to light effect from the top to the bottom of this kind of fuzzy feathery bit. And I think it's important to show that different texture because otherwise all of the strokes and the lines would look pretty much similar on the entire flower. But this gives it a little bit of a visual contrast, offering something slightly different to all those you know, hatch lines rising up and flowing out from the center. Right, with the next bit I had to be bold and I had to be brave because this is a very dark petal near the base. So I'm pressing down quite heavily at the beginning of the stroke and then just easing up on the way towards the center because I'm trying to show uh, this kind of like, there were these white lines, these white streaks flowing out from the center of, of the flower uh, across the petal. So I'm trying to show those, but of course they're gonna start and curve outwards, almost like elephant's tusks towards the edge of the petal. So I need to make sure that as I'm doing my lines, you know, I keep them flowing outwards, that they don't start to get too straight. And of course they do start to point downwards. You can see that I put in quite a lot of pencil shading here in order to guide me. Um, you know, kind of like underline so I, I can tell, right, yeah, this bit's got to be really dark and inky and this bit doesn't have to be, you know, I can change this bit, whatever. And the, the pencil lines show me both the direction of the, the white lines and dark lines that I've got to do, but also where they've got to be, you know, in terms of how dark and how thick. Uh, and I think if I hadn't put the pencil lines in there to guide me here, I think I probably would have messed it up and I would have been really annoyed having done half the flower already. And this bit's kind of freer, but it kind of isn't as well. It's a bit of a double-edged sword because, yes, I can slap that brush pen down and do much fatter, thicker areas of black than I have on the rest of the picture. But I've also got to try and be careful enough to get them in the right place and not overdo it because I could swamp the thing with too much blanket, black ink if I'm not careful. And, yeah, I could save that using perhaps, you know, like a white gel pen or a highlighter pen or something like that in order to put highlights back in. But you can see when you've done that. And I wanted this to be just pure, you know, black ink on a white piece of paper. 
So what I've done here is I've put in some of those directional black lines, leaving the white areas in between. So that gives me an idea of where I need to kind of fill some of these areas of black now, uh, and also, you know, how I can add some more to make those white lines a little bit thinner and, and maybe make them taper out instead of just, you know, ending quite abruptly. There are still some areas on this very, very dark base kind of leaf that are um, tones and they're not completely black. So here you can see me laying down some hatched lines, you know, little lines parallel to each other, starting dark at the bottom and then getting a little bit lighter towards that kind of fuzzy thing in the middle. And now I'm getting a bit braver. I'm slapping in some nice dark areas of shadow on the base. And again, where the parts, these frilly parts of the petal kind of, you know, curve outwards, they're catching a bit more light. So I have to do those using the hatch lines that you can see me doing there. And now I'm being braver and I'm slapping in large, big, fat areas of black. And the brush pen is so much fun to do this kind of thing with. And I'm flicking those stroke woods upwards into the kind of white pattern lines that I've talked about. So hopefully I'll end up with a kind of just slightly tapered lines there, a little, little bit of hatching to suggest it just the white pattern comes down and then it maybe gets into a bit of shadow before it fully disappears. And that's why I'm using those kind of tapered lines. Like I said, don't want it to end abruptly like a full stop. And some of the parts of this black um, petal still have these areas that are gray. So again, you can see me being very careful when I'm laying my strokes in here. I'm not going all out and making the whole thing a solid black still want to have some of those areas of hatching that sort of lead up from the edge and then curve in towards the middle. So once I've put those hatched directional lines in from the outside towards the inside of the petal, all I need to do then is go back in with the brush pen and make them thicker and fill some of those gaps um, so that some of those lines become a little bit faded, a little bit paler. So when you're halfway through and you know the technique you're using works and it looks good and you're happy with it, then all you need to do is continue using that technique throughout the rest of the flower until the entire thing is finished. So here you can see me working on those petals near the top that are paler, that are more white areas, more highlights on them. So I'm using my hatching, yes, but I'm using it sparingly. And then as I get down into the lower set of petals that I know are darker, then I'm using hatching all over the entire petal, obviously varying it, making it slightly lighter, making it slightly darker in places, but using hatching on all of the entire petals. There's no highlights, if you will, on it. I was really pleased with the technique and the way that this worked out. Uh, and it gave me quite a lot of confidence to just say, oh, right, OK, for the next week, I'm just going to do, you know, a couple more of these kind of this kind of technique, this kind of hatching technique, ink drawings of flowers. And it was a terrific boost in terms of that. And sometimes that's a good thing to have in your art. You know, if something's going well. Continue with it. Continue with that style. Keep working on that. So there you go. That's pretty much finished. Um, you know that I liked it, but what did you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you did like it and you appreciated the video, please don't forget to share it and also subscribe. And also, if you check the links below this video, you'll see there's a couple of links to other ink drawings that I've done with the brush pen. Um, please check those out, see what you think. Thanks for watching.